कॉम्रेड्स एंड फ्रेंड्स टुडे आवर कंट्री इज गोइंग थ्रू वन ऑफ द बेस्ट पीरियड्स इन इन इट्स एंटेर हिस्टरी बिकॉज टुडे द इंडियन रशीम ईज नाउ कंट्रोल्ड बै आर एस एस द लोंगेस्ट रिंग आंड द बिगस्ट फास्ट ऑर्गनसे इन द वेलड टुडे वि ऑल नो दैट आज द फास्ट बिगस्ट फास्ट ऑर्गनसे आर एस एस ईज नौ हाविंग इट्स कंट्रोल ओवर दि एंटर् मैक्रो आंड मैक्रो स्पेस ऑफ अवर कंट्री इट कंट्रोल द स्टेट पवर आज वेल आज द स्ट्रीट पवर आंड बी जे पी इस ओणी वण ऑफ द पोलिटिकल टूल ऑफ आर एस एस बी जे पी इट्स बी नो दैट इट हास् इट क्लम्स इन टू तौस ट्वेंटी दैट इट हास् इट हाड एन क्रोर मेबरशिप सो दैट बी जे पी इस ओणी वण ऑफ द पोलिटिकल टूल ऑफ आर एस एस आर एस एस हास् हंड्रड्स ऑफ ओपन आंड सीक्रेट ऑर्गनसे कंट्रोल द एयर आसपेक्ट ऑफ अवर कंट्री मिलिटरी जुडीशरी the whole civilian administration education history culture everything and even economy being a far right organization in its economic philosophy it is the most far right organization therefore in all these aspects we are facing a very serious crisis so it is in this context that we are taking up the task of the anti fascist struggle today and we know Fascism is not a mere question of any what is called any religious question. Fascism is always connected with the interest of the most reactionary elements of corporate capital. It is a dictatorship. It is the authoritarian regime of the most reactionary, the most corrupt corporate capital today. And we know that the Adani's, the Ambani's are now controlling this country. the wealth of this country we know that almost 60% of the country's wealth is controlled by 1% of the super rich and only less than 3% of the country's wealth is with 90% of the people here so that much inequality is there and the so called crony capitalism we know that adani who was the third biggest capitalist crony capitalist in the world in the list of world billionaires who was having the third rank now though he is collapsed to 33 his position still we know how he is integrally linked up with the regime how we he is identified with the modi regime all these things we know so it is for the interest of these corporates that this fascist regime is superimposed on us and now in our perspective in our country today the immediate and the most urgent political task of the people today is to resist and defeat this fascism now imposed on us by the most reactionary sections of our country we know that there are many ruling classes in india many the ruling class parties are in india and these ruling class parties are having their interests having their roots in corporate capital in spite of that we know all ruling classes are all ruling class parties are not fascist for example the congress which has already which initiated the neo liberal far right policies in our country in the 90s abandoning the negrovian model that we were following still then though the congress started it and the congress is soft hindutva also we know all these things and it, it was during the regime of the congress that the babri masjid was demolished but we know in spite of all that past events we still say that we will not characterize the congress as a fascist party similarly the many ruling parties are there there are the social democrats like cpm for example which ruled in bengal for 34 years and in kerala it is holding power it is now with adani when the vidinyam question came up we know the vidinyam port controlled by adani where the fisher folk the 
the most oppressed sections of Kerala. They fought against Adani's these uh, uh, that project. But at that time, we know the BJP on the right side and CPM on the left side were protecting Adani. And the CPM government led by Pinarayi is now the most uh, what is called uh, uh, associated with the corporate capitalists. The chosen Kerala is one of the uh, place where capital corporates are very much interested to invest. In spite of that, we still say that uh, these parties like CPM, even in spite of implementing the most reactionary policies there, we are not saying that CPM is a fascist party. Similarly, Tanamul is there. Many parties are there who are implementing neoliberal policies, far-right policies, but only BJP is a fascist party because it is controlled by RSS. This is the Indian situation. Therefore, in this context, what should be our understanding, what should be our approach in our fight against how we will overcome this fascist situation? Because we know why we, we should overcome because if the fascists are there, because 2024 the general election is coming. In that general election, if the RSS, the BJP wins, RSS means BJP, BJP means RSS. If the RSS BJP wins, we know that they will go to any extent of declaring India as a Hindu Rashtra. And uh, in the colonial, during the colonial period, Manusmriti. when the Indian people were fighting against the British imperialism, the RSS was actually supporting. It was not fighting against them. Their enemies were not British imperialism. Their enemies were Muslims, Christians and Hindus. They declared, Gold, Gold is this bunch of thoughts we know. There it is declared that Muslims are the enemies number one. Then Christians, communists. These were the enemies of the RSS, not British colonialism. And we know that Afro-Asian Latin American countries are concerned during the colonial period and even now in the neo-colonial period, imperialism is the enemy of the people. During the colonial period, anti-colonialism was the essence of nationalism. But the RSS claiming themselves as the most patriotic, they were supporting the British. So this is the history of RSS. Not only that, they demanded, they proposed that when in 1949, November 26, when the Constituent Assembly led by Dr. Ambakar was finalizing the Indian Constitution, RSS proposed in its organizer, November 30th, November 26, the Constituent Assembly proposed the new Constitution, adopted the new Constitution. And in 19, November 30th itself, 1949, in its organizer, the mouthpiece of RSS, it wrote that the Indian constitution should be minus Murthy. It again repeated the same in 1950, January 11, that minus Murthy should be the constitution. We must see that the Ambakar, who could understand these things who, because of his farsightedness, he banned the minus Murthy in 1927. RSS formed in 1925, but uh, Dr. Ambakar banned the minus Murthy in 1927, December 25. So RSS again demanded this Manisburi as an Indian constitution. Now they are going to how that agenda is with them. Now they are the, the, the Dharma Sansad are there. Many meetings are going on with the Hindu sannyasis and the RSS ideologues for drafting. They have already reported that this a, a new constitution is in the process. They are not accepting this constitution. They never, they were not all, all, even upheld in the national flag. It was only during the Vajpayee regime that they first raised the national flag in Nagapur. We know all these things. I need, I need to explain all these things. And uh, this is the history of RSS. They, are, they, they were not for the majority of the people because according to Manismudi, which is the ideological basis of RSS fascism in India, according to that Manismudi, women are subhumans. Dalits are subhumans. They are not human beings. Sutras. The most inhuman the most inhuman institution, caste system, whose ideological basis is that Manismurthy, the book, that is the RSS ideology. It is based on that the fascism, Indian fascism is built up. We must understand, we must see that according to the concrete situation in each history, each country, 
according to the historical according to the social cultural uh, concrete facts international capital when it is facing crisis today because capitalism is imperialism is facing the biggest ever crisis when we are discussing banks are again silicon valley banks are collapsed so uh, many uh, even signature bank is followed by the collapse of the silicon valley bank so capitalism is continuously facing crisis so when crisis is confronted by imperialism to uh, what is called uh, to shore up to maintain its profit rate it will resort to all means dividing the people polarizing the people on the lines of religion and dividing people on the lines of reactionary ideologies majoritarianism putting majority against the minority so these are agendas of international capital corporate capital and in in the america see they follow evangelism in the zionism they follow and even neo tribalism they follow use buddhism they use according to myanmar and sri lanka we know in india hindutva that is the the ideology of that is manusmriti that is a basis of our so now this is a majoritarian agenda that putting the majoritarian agenda of hindutva against the muslims and other sections minority so that a polarization is being created but actually we know the we know that the agenda of rss is not majority of the hindus so called hindus there only there is a few, few brahmanical upper caste will be the ultimate beneficiaries of this regime majority of the people will not be the beneficiaries it is corporates adani sambani ambanis and multinationals who are going to gain this is the situation so we, today we if you criticize what is the situation today if you criticize modi if you criticize the government modi regime then it is anti national it is a treason you will be subjected to sedition uh, that is and uh, you will be subjected to uapa anti sedition act this is the situation so criticizing the government and if you express your opinion then it will be anti national it will be against the country so criticizing the government is criticizing it is it is anti national and treason this is the interpretation that is there if you 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 have no right to criticize the regime you have no right to differ and if you say something if you differ from a position then it is it is against the country this is the situation this is fascism so uh, suppose the uh, this is this that is why we say that the fascism and the other ruling classes there is a difference so we are saying that in the in this particular context what is the task of the people our task is to defeat the rss and bjp from power that is the immediate task for that what we should do we should have a minimum agenda we should have a minimum program that minimum program i, I mean minimum agenda means defeat rss defeat fascism is the single point agenda upon which we must unite together otherwise we will be in a situation where tomorrow we may not be able to speak like this so if tomorrow we have to criticize we have to speak on behalf of the people then this regime should be removed at the earliest this is the task of the people of this country we have to be very bold in saying we have to face whatever we are going to face we have to face seriously that is the situation therefore in the coming 2024 election the people of india should try their maximum and all non fascist parties should try their maximum they should come forward to avoid a split in anti rss votes so anti rss votes should not be split up. that should be the agenda and the fascists should not be allowed to come to power for this communists have a role because we know as communists our task is that we should always there nobody is there to take up the task of the working class and the oppressed only communists are there so we are bound to take up the task of the working class and the oppressed we should be for building up movements we should develop struggles because otherwise nobody will be there so as communists progressive and left sections democratic sections while we are uh, with the working class and the oppressed we must have the immediate task with us that while upholding this issue while uh, we are with the our this long term strategic interest upholding the interest of the working class we should see that the immediate task is to defeat the fascists therefore we must have a tactical understanding we must have a tactical alliance with all non fascist forces 
that should be in such a way that we should not surrender while we are uniting with the non fascist forces in the anti fascist struggle we should not surrender our principle our strategic long term task of upholding the interests of the working class and the oppressed so while continuing these struggles while whatever form we require we must see that the immediate task is to defeat the fascists for that we should have a broad anti fascist front there is a history behind us there is history is there what the communists did in the 40s when hitler fascism mussolini fascism were there at that time uh, the communist international built up an anti fascist united front led by soviet union even there an alliance was there between other powers other imperialist powers including uh, churchill and roosevelt we know america and britain why fascism is the most reactionary the most dangerous system in the world therefore to defeat that the communists had to unite with other ruling classes even imperialists and uh, so that is the immediate task but we must also see that while taking up that task we should not surrender the interests of the working class and outers therefore in the anti fascist front while we build up the anti fascist front with all like minded forces we should say, keep our uh, task in behind that we should always be with the working class and the oppressed that means the interest of their uh, survival against neo liberal policies against corporatization against price rise against unemployment against corruption against ecological crisis which are all because of corporate capital so it is a corporate capital behind all these behind ecological crisis begin the life of the, all the, the the serious situation that we are facing operation of bibon operation of minorities operation of dalits operation of all people all are integrally connected with the interest of the corporates so while opposing this neo liberal policies while opposing corporatization we must be very clear on our agenda that we have to defeat the rss because otherwise we will not be able to move forward so taking up the task we must see that our independent position of uh, upholding our long term interest should be there otherwise we will be suicide we will be suicide in our task so this agenda should be clearly spelled out so while we unite with non fascist forces our independent position our independent position of upholding the rights of the oppressed and the working class should be there that as left we should uphold and at the same time we should go for an anti fascist task and we must be capable because there are many ruling class parties today at a time when concerted effort is needed to defeat the fascist to defeat rss bjp the ruling classes are not that much interested they are behind petty politics you know we have seen in tripura we are seeing in many elections now what is happening this serious question in up even the bsp and the sp are there they are there are they, they on this question what is any any understanding is there in bihar why we, what we are seeing so this question is very important and all over india the ruling class parties because of their interest because of their uh, what is called the merger with the interest of the capital they are not upholding the interest of the people this question should be seriously analyzed and only by a nation wide campaign only by an anti fascist movement initiated by the left today other ruling class parties can also be come to the this basic task otherwise these ruling class parties in different states they will compete each other and the rss will gain and we know that the rss bjp campaign is ruling with a minority vote they have not the majority support of this country because of the present system of election otherwise if we follow proportional representation or some other electoral system this type of victory will not be there so in a country in our country where all these malpractices and all other issues are possible all all types of manipulations are possible they are effectively using they have the corporate fund the arj 75 more than 80% of the corporate fund is going to in the name of corporate social responsibility and other are going to the ruling party so they are capable they have the corporate backing they have the corporate media is behind them 
and they have the machinery behind them. The whole administration is beginning to them. So this can be resisted and defeated only if we have a broad, broadest possible anti-fascist unity today. So that is a task. So we should initiate, in the present situation, we should initiate, the left democratic progressive section should initiate a, a movement by which an atmosphere should be created in the country. And we know we are weak, we are, we are small forces. We are not capable today, but we should create an atmosphere. We should, the atmosphere should be created and a political situation will be created so that these ruling class parties should be capable. I mean, non-fascist ruling, because there is no other option today. So the non-fascist ruling party should be uniting against the fascist. That is the situation. That we have to create the condition. Only then we will be able to lead class struggle. I am open. We are openly saying so we have to lead the class struggle. We have to change the social system. Within the social system, within the rule of capital, private property, the people, the working class and the oppressed, women, they will not have any liberation. So we must change the system. But today, even for struggling for that, even for campaigning for that, we should have an atmosphere of freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of assembly. So that is not possible in a fascist contest. So that is why we should be very serious in this contest and we should be capable of, openly we are saying, we should be capable of the contradictions within the ruling classes are there. And these contradictions should be used in favor of the people, of the working class and the oppressors. So only if we are capable, we can effectively use so all the left democratic progressive sections of our country irrespective of their ideological positions. We may have many ideological differences. Keeping that, we should come to a single point agenda of defeating fascism today. That is the immediate task. And it is that with that perspective, today CPML Rashtar is working. We are also, we have our line, our program, our long-term task, but we have an immediate task in front of us. Our political resolution that was adopted at the Tolitu Party Congress uphold that the immediate task before the people is to defeat fascism. And for that, a broadest possible anti-fascist unity, united front should be created. This is our task. This, with this perspective, we are moving. Thank you, cooperation.